A few years ago, I stumbled on a lecture by philosopher Alan Watts that deeply resonated with me during my journey through the world of mini-tour golf. I'll leave a link to the lecture below so you can listen for yourself, but here's what I took from it and how it forever changed the way I teach and play golf. There's a story of a man who has a fight with a mind-reading circus bear. Since the bear knows what's coming ahead of time, it's able to dodge all the man's attacks. The man's only hope to win the fight is to somehow act without choosing. Acting without choosing sounds impossible, but we do it all the time. For instance, we do not choose how we move our feet while walking because we're experts. We can even do it in our sleep. Sleepwalking around the golf course is not a bad way to describe some of my best rounds. Golfers having a zone experience often describe it after the fact as an out-of-body experience, almost as if they're watching themselves play. There's a clue to defeating the circus bear buried in these experiences of being a passive observer to one's own thoughts and actions. Unfortunately, prolonged zone experiences are rare. I can only remember four or five instances in my life, but I recognize many zones almost every time I commit to playing process-oriented, what I call circus bear golf. Results-oriented golf tempts the player to treat the target as the goal. The trouble with this strategy is what archers call target panic. Target panic is anxiety caused by anticipation of failure. It's a self-destructive feedback loop caused by interfering thoughts from then and now. The golfer with target panic is considering the implications of something that is yet to happen while trying to make a golf swing. This inner clash creates a confusing signal, which the body struggles to interpret. The more interference in the signal, the less the result will resemble the intent, up to a point where the golfer is so paralyzed he or she can barely initiate the swing. So how can we lessen this interference? The answer lies within process-oriented circus bear golf, where the player focuses solely on what can be controlled during a moment physicists and philosophers call the eternal now. When you think about the passage of time in your life, it has never not been now. In other words, it is never not now. Of course, the past occurred and we must make smart decisions for a better future, but the means by which we achieve these ends can only take place in the moment that actually exists, the eternal now. It could be argued that a golfer describing an out-of-body zone or mini-zone experience is describing the eternal now. Life as a human typically involves a narrator who warns us of what lies ahead. We can think of this narrator as doubt or fear. This narrator protected our ancestors by encouraging us to treat that rustling in the bushes as a saber-toothed tiger rather than just a squirrel, a safer long-term bet even though it might not be true. In an out-of-body zone experience where one's own actions are coming as a surprise to the viewer, where has the narrator gone? Is he out to lunch? Did he die? Was he an illusion? In the interest of self-preservation, our brains are constantly modeling, questioning, predicting, storytelling, so it's an odd, almost out-of-body experience to visit a peaceful headspace where there is no judgment, no analysis, no expectations, just a surfer riding a wave. The surfer has no control over the ocean, but has total control over a process to be in position to ride the wave when it breaks. A golfer can't control the breaks he gets, but can and must control a process to send the narrator out to lunch long enough to allow a fearless swing to produce a result resembling the plan. Every golfer's process will be unique, educated by trial and error, but I encourage all golfers to start around the idea of a plan creating comfort and the comfort creating the plan. Forming an honest plan for a golf shot is a process of charting the best course of action given your capabilities. This process of deciding the shot that you want to hit must thoroughly occupy your mind, lulling the narrator to sleep and leaving you in a headspace of honest comfort because you have no choice not to be. It's not the same kind of physical, soft comfort you might feel sitting in an expensive leather chair. It's an innocent, fearless, comfortable mindset you have fostered by considering only what it is that you are trying to do. Not what if 
You, in this moment of eternal now, are deciding the what. An honest plan stands alone, free of expectations. You are informing your body in a crystal clear voice what kind of golf shot you'd like it to produce. The crystal clear voice gives the body no indication of rustling in the bushes, no hesitation, no fear, just a message of pure intent. In this moment of eternal now, you are envisioning the shot you want to hit. There is nothing else being considered. This visualized plan is informed by what you honestly know you can do, which leaves you primed in an honestly comfortable headspace where your intent can transition seamlessly from planning to swinging. When we are planning, we are planning. When we are swinging, we are swinging. The trouble occurs when we try to consider two things at once. Intent has no agenda in circus bear golf. You're not asking the body to hit a high cut three wood over the water, to leave an eagle putt, to have a chance to hammer and win $100 so you can brag to all your buddies after the round, all the while knowing if you mess up, you're going to have to take a drop and they're probably going to hammer back and you might lose $1,000. In this example of results-oriented golf, the man is hoping to be able to sneak a left hook past the mind-reading circus bear. Hope all you want, though. The bear knows that you're hoping. He knows you're hoping because you're not comfortable. He knows you're not comfortable because you are wondering if it is a squirrel or a tiger in the bush. He knows that in this moment of eternal now, you are considering the implications of something yet to happen when you should be giving your body clear instructions of the shot you'd like it to hit. How do you beat a mind-reading circus bear in a fight? Act without choosing. How do you act without choosing? When you are planning, plan. When you are swinging, swing. When uncomfortable, doubtful, fearful thoughts come to your attention while swinging, you are choosing to fight an unwinnable fight with a mind-reading circus bear. I chose the circus bear as my mascot for Clay Winnell Golf as a reminder to my students to swing while swinging. It's a scary leap of faith to swing with freedom, but it is the only way to consistently produce your intended shot. I look forward to working with you online or in person to build your process, refine freedom on the golf course, and kick that mind-reading bear's ass. I'm Clay Winnell. Thanks for your time.